Hello and welcome back. So in the previous video, we spoke about exception handling and chained exceptions. So in this video, we're going to talk about new exception types and assertions. Um, so just before I start, can you please subscribe to my channel so that I know to make more videos um, and also give it a thumbs up if you like it, thanks. Um, so now we're just gonna talk about um, declaring new exception types. So. As I said, there are certain built-in ones within the java.lang package. So for instance, um, even from the very beginning, if you're starting out um, using Java and you use the scanner class, and then within the scanner class, you have, let's say, um, you're going to take the input from the next int, um, but you input something like um, a decimal or, a, well, a float. So when you type that in as the user, but you're expecting an int, it will already um, throw an exception called um, a mismatch exception. So it's expecting an integer, but you're after giving it a float. So it will tell you what type it is as well. But with these this um, new types of exceptions, most um, Java programmers use the existing classes in the Java API, or there are also third party vendors, or there are also free available ones from the internet as well. But the methods of those classes typically are declared to throw appropriate exceptions when problems occur. So you can write as well a list of processes that existing exceptions make, um, so you can make your programs more robust. Um, so if you build classes that other programmers will use, it's appropriate then to declare um, your own exception classes that are specific to the problems that occur when um, other programmer user <laughs> uses your reusable classes. So um, one of the principles of uh, so good software engineering is uh, software reuse. So um, you don't reinvent the wheel and that kind of stuff as well. So a new exception class must extend an existing exception class um, to ensure that the class can be used for the exception handling mechanism. So it's already built into the java.lang um, as an exception handling mechanism, but to use it, then you have to um, extend. So again, with extend, we have the keyword for, from inheritance. So as an extension of your family, <laughs> because you inherit. So if you're extending all objects inherently, um, implicitly extend from um, java.lang.object, but uh, then you can also extend from the um, exception so you can have exception handling mechanism allowed. Um, an exception class is like any other class, however, um, a typical new exception class contains no members other than four constructors. So we already know what a constructor is, I'll put the link below. <laughs> um, so one that takes no arguments but pa passes your default error message as a string um, to the superclass constructor, one that receives a customized error um, also as a string and pass it to the superclass constructor and then one uh, that receives a customized error message as a string and a throwable for chaining exceptions um, and passes uh, both to the superclass constructor and then we also have one that receives a throwable for chaining exceptions and passing it to the superclass constructor. So associating each um, type with, of serious execution time malfunction with an appropriately named exception class improves program clarity. <laughs> so now we're going to um, take a look at assertions but before we begin as well by convention all exception class names should always have end with the word exception so that it's identifiable as an exception class um, so that it, because we also want to know whether it uses the exception handling mechanism so it should extend an existing um, exception class and then it should also use the word exception within the naming convention. Um, most programmers will not need to declare their own exception classes. Before defining your own, study the existing ones, choose one that's appropriate. If you need to use the appropriate one, then extend the related one. Um, and then so if you're if you're creating a new class to represent um, a method that it extends, attempts to divide by zero, then you can use the arithmetic exception because that already has the division by uh, zero in, in arithmetic. Um, and then if the existing classes are not appropriate, then super classes for a new exception decide whether your new class should be checked or an unchecked exception um, class. If 
if clients should be required to handle the exception, the new exception class should be a checked exception. So extend exception, but, but not runtime exception. <laughs> so the client um, application should be able to reasonably recover um, from such an exception um, if the client code should be um, able to ignore the exception. So if it's an unchecked one, and then the new class should ex extend the runtime exception. So now we're going to look at the assertion as well. So we have our uh, back to basics, our import java.util.scanner class from the java.util package. I've written out some of the um, uh, comments here alongside it so it's easier to walk through the code. So we have our scanner, um, which is part of our scanner.util. Um, package and a simple text scanner which uh, can parse primitive types and strings using regular expressions. Um, I've called it input, you can call it whatever you want. I, for this particular one I've called it input um, and then I obviously we're taking the input from the system as a scanner, <laughs> creating a new scanner object. Um, then we print out to the screen so just an enter a number between 0 and 10. Um, we assign that next integer from the input into number. So we're using the next int method within the java.util scanner class. Um, and we're assigning it to the integer number. And then we make what's called an assertion. So we have our assert is our keyword. Uh, number is uh, less than or equal to zero and number is <laughs> less than or equal to um, greater than or equal to zero, sorry, and um, number less than or equal to 10, bad number plus number, and then we print out, you have entered, and our placeholders, which are our normal percentage D and our percentage N for a new line, and if I just run the code, then we have here, let's say if I put in three, you entered three, but let's run it again. Let's say if I put in 11, you entered 11. Ah, okay, I, I, I know what's happening now. Um, we need to uh, change the preferences in the installed um, JREs. So we have Java here, install JREs. And if you um, click it for global changes, you want to click it, click it here. And then your default VM arguments is minus EA. And finish, apply, apply and close. And now if I run again, hopefully it will work this time. There it is, phew. <laughs> so I, I, I had forgotten to enable that. So you need to enable that within the um, Eclipse. If you're using Eclipse, I'm using Eclipse. So um, also uh, you, you can use assertions primarily for um, debugging and uh, identifying logic errors in your application, which is really important because you can have um, logic errors that are not outputting the correct um, number, but actually the entire code is written correctly, but it's just one off by one or something like that. And that would be like a loop error or maybe um, an array, um, something like that. So that's also important to know. There's also one um, observation. So users uh, shouldn't encounter assertion errors. They should only be uh, they should only be used during the program development. So for this reason, then you you shouldn't catch any assertion errors. Instead, allow the program to terminate so you can see the error message and then go back and fix it. Um, so that's it for today. There are assertions. Um, we also have what's known pre and post. Um, conditions so it's similar to the pre and post condition um, increment and decrement except a precondition must be true when the method is invoked and a post condition is true after the method successfully returns um, so a precondition describes the constraints on the method perimeters so what you put into the method um, and if it's not met then the method's behavior is undefined or it might throw an exception so or proceed to an illegal um, value or something like that and then the post condition is uh, that it returns successfully but it can describe what happens with the return value so if you have a method that returns an integer or returns a specific value a string or boolean or whatever you've defined your um, 
return <laughs> for a value, um, then you can check whether there's any side effects and then um, you should be able to document all the post conditions then. So throwing exceptions when um, preconditions or post conditions are met are you typically um, described within the within the specification of a program so that's also important so assertions then using the assert keyword then is usually when implementing a debugging a class um, it can be useful for uh, state conditions to be true at a particular point in the method yeah so that's it for today if you like the video please give it a thumbs up uh, please subscribe to my channel so i know to make more videos and thanks for watching bye <laughs>